the band are obviously looking for international exposure and seeking any good deals to get them out there and touring outside of Africa. Um, which brings me on to the next thing. Metal Horizon had launched an annual Rock Against AIDS festival, which involved bands from um, South Africa, and the money um, is given to HIV AIDS and non-governmental agencies. Um, can you tell me a bit about the Rock Against AIDS festival? Uh, we started Rock Against HIV AIDS in 2001 as an annual charity event to sensitize our audience about HIV AIDS and stigmatization. But due to lack of sponsorship, we sometimes fail to do it. That's a bit sad. I mean, it uh, sounds like it's a really good cause and a great festival. I mean, metal festivals are always cool and uh, doing something good like that for HIV AIDS is um, very admirable of you guys for starting something like that. I wish you luck with getting a sponsorship in the future to maybe carry on doing that festival um in actual fact it's not rock against AIDS. we decided to call it rock against hiv because we just wanted to to get away from the monotony of um AIDS, AIDS, AIDS everywhere so we realized that since the the <coughs> the, the virus itself is the one which causes AIDS, so we wanted to to go straight and name the the event after the the, the, the virus, so we, we decided to call it uh, Rock Against HIV. The HIV virus is one which causes a full-grown AIDS. So, the event was founded by Metal Horizon in 2001. Mainly, primarily we were targeting, we wanted to raise awareness and sensitize everyone about the dangers of HIV AIDS and also wanted to to sensitize our own fans because you know like mo mostly mo even most of the events they are primarily primarily done by you know bands or music artists which are in the mainstream and always rock is, is sidelined so we we wanted to show the world and even our our own leaders here in Botswana that uh, even people from uh, rock music artists uh, can can come up with something that can save can, or can be a partner with the with the with the nation in fighting the scourge. So that's why we decided to to come up with this with this event. And when it started, we 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 we, we just we just thought which area would be would be the the one to host the event. So we chose. Mau Mau is a tourist area where like everyone from the whole world like you can name from Europe, Asia, Africa or everywhere tourists go to that place so and we also have a very good fan base there so we decided to go and host the event there and uh, we have been hosting that uh, for we have been hosting that event for for about 12 years now and it's, it's still running so basically that's that's about it. We just want to sensitize everyone about the, the, the dangers of HIV and AIDS. You were tuned to Dilly Gaff Radio.
Anti Metal Horizon there with a song called Fire. Um, recently, you guys posted pictures on your Facebook page of a protest that you took part in against the um, abuse of women and children in Africa. Um, can you please tell us a bit about that? Yeah, there's a lot of abuse in, in Botswana, or let me say, all over uh, Africa. Uh, children are being raped, and a lot of women are being exposed to abuse in their families, married and unmarried. So we felt it's uh, our duty to also respond to such, to show that it is not a good thing to our sisters and our kids. Uh, in December 2013, a certain promoter uh, came up with, uh, talked to us and said he, he knew our success with regard to how we we have how, how been doing in the local circles in terms of metal and um, he knows that we, we started a project called Rock Against HIV and was successful, he's quite aware of that so he approached us about this, this idea of uh, uh, coming up with an event about protest against abuse of women so we we, 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 we sat down and talked to him about how, how we can go about it and then we suggested uh, how, how, how he, he can run it and uh, came up with um, suggested some of, some, of, some of the ideas like bands and how we should yeah, how the event should be it was supposed to be a two day event and unfortunately in, in the outdoor though it was supposed to be in an outdoor place in Maung and then because of rainfall, there was heavy rainfall, so the, the event had to go indoors. Uh -huh. But it was quite successful still indoors, although the venue had changed. Uh, we did it mainly because, like I said before, that people always have negative things about, think negative things about uh, rock fans or rock artists or something like that. They always look at us as outlaws or people who are out to get to, you know, out. Uh, they think of us as some people who are out to out for no good so we we said okay let's go on with this one and let's do it guys and then we decided to team up with that promoter and then the event was on it was quite successful and we we this time around we invited at least one or two international bands one from namibia and the other one from 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 zambia unfortunately this guy only the band from uh, from South Africa came, and then the other band didn't come in. So we we played, and it it was good. It was absolutely good. We, he was impressed, and then he even the people as we marched in the streets, people were so amazed because they only saw denim, leather, and t-shirt, black t-shirt. You know, you know, rock fans are metal heads are always putting on such gear. So we we were marching in the streets and holding placards about rock against abuse of women and children. It was successful. We sent the message through, and we 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 hope that uh, the authorities are uh, they are watching. They can see that no, we are not only music artists. We are partners in building the nation. We can go into a cause that can, you know, bring positive to something positive to our own nation. So that that is how the event came about, and uh, it was really good. It's good to hear that it's been so successful, and um, I hope it continues to be successful in the future. And uh, very admirable of you guys to organise an event like that, and also to invite bands um, from other countries to come and play. You know, it's a good thing, exposing. The abuse of women and, and children in Africa, as we know, it's a huge problem there, and worldwide, really. So yeah, that's all for horns up to you guys, man, for um, doing that one. This is Metal Horizon bassist Santos. You are listening to Delgav Radio Station with Gin Machine. Stay hard and keep rocking.
Hi, this is Gabriel from Metal Horizon and you are listening to Daily Gav Radio Station with the Dean Machine. Don't touch the dial and keep rocking. Yeah. 
for those of you that have just tuned in, this is Delegaff Radio streaming out of London, UK, and today we are interviewing Metal Horizon from Botswana. And there was a song called The Game. Santos, can you tell me how many albums have Metal Horizon released so far? So far, oh, we have released uh, three albums, namely Ancestral Blessings, Mayoki, Myopic Enslaved, and lastly, a uh, self-titled Metal Horizon. What about number four? Is there any signs of a fourth album for us Metal Horizon fans? We are planning to record the fourth album before the end of 2014 because right now we are working on the new songs. I believe on the Metal Horizon release, the 2003 release, you guys have um, re-recorded some of the songs from the previous two albums. Can you tell me a bit about that, please? We went to record our third album. In the album, about five to five to f- five to six songs were re-recorded from the previous two albums. So now that we we felt something needed to be added in in those songs, so we decided to re-record them uh, with uh, giving them another feel. So that that's that's uh, that, that's how we that's how we did it. Um, you guys have sold in excess of 20,000 albums. Personally, I think that's fantastic for an unsigned metal band from Africa. I mean, how many of those sales are international and how many of them are local? And how many do you need to sell in your country to actually achieve gold record status? I know in South Africa, I think back in the days it was 25,000. If you sell 20,000 uh, on one album, it's a lot. But if you sell 20,000 on three albums in 15 years, then you can't really, you know, go around screaming about it. Uh, so far, we don't have a, a setup that uh, can be used to determine whether this is gold status or not. But uh, for now, we're expecting that will be put into place since we, ha- we now have cosmos which collects realities and, you know, it's like an eye to all those. It collects money from all the realities from the radio stations and it also keeps data as to what is happening around uh, music as a whole okay so uh in terms of uh in terms of uh, achievements i must say that uh, we have um, yeah we have recorded three studio albums that's an achievement for us definitely and then we have also Locally, we have played like each and every major show. So, locally, we have that's 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 our achievement. Internationally, uh, we have played uh, mainly in South Africa. We have played in South Africa several times. We played the, some of the biggest shows in Africa. I mean, in South Africa, we have played at Opikopi. Opikopi is a very big event. It goes for about two or three days. Yeah, I know Opikopi. I'm surprised. Uh I actually never got to see you guys live because a couple of the bands I was in back in the day in South Africa played in Opikopi in the in the late or early uh, mid to late nineties. Uh, Brothering and um, a few other bands that I was in, um, and I know you've also played with uh, bands like Urban Assault, who are friends of mine, and they also played gigs with our bands. So I'm really disappointed that I never actually got to gig with you guys or uh, see you at a festival. We have played, um, we've also played um, Woodstock. Woodstock in 2000, we played Woodstock, it was a very successful show. It is also a two day event. Um, then we've, generally, we just toured South Africa, we've toured Johannesburg, we've toured Pretoria, we've toured Deben, and other small towns. So that's our successes. And we also have our awards. We have I think we have won, we have we were nominated once, and then we won about three awards for Botswana Musicians Awards. So those are our achievements. Well done on winning those awards. Uh, let's check out a song now of um, one of my favorite songs of yours called "Let Them Down." Uh, Dumi, do you want to tell us a little bit about the song before we play it? Let them down. Um, if you listen to the lyrics. You know, all the vocals, the, the way the vocals come out, they're a bit heavy. We we'll try to introduce a little bit of crowd in there, and even the drums are, you know, should I say, all the the guitar works and the drums are you know, more heavier. 
and it's like moving towards uh, you know death like uh, kind of music the lyrics is about uh, when you know someone you, you go to someone and ask for help or to people and ask for help they turn you down then after sometime they realize that you are going up they come back again to ask for help you know that's that's usually about that hi we are metal horizon check us out on facebook.com slash metal horizon
killer track there, man. Uh, we're going to jump straight into another song, um, a song called We Are Going To Win. Uh, Salalo, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about the song, please. Motivation, 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 you know, uh, perseverance, you know, aiming high in life, you know, n- never letting anything to put you down. So basically that's 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 what we uh, what we're gonna win is all about the african heavy metal show brought to you exclusively by dolly gas radio and the bean machine Delegate Radio streaming out of London, UK. Uh, today I'm interviewing Metal Horizon from Botswana, Africa. And uh, the band consists of Dumi, Ntwa, Dumela, Metal Riffs on guitars and vocals, Gabriel on guitars, Santos on bass, and Salalo on drums. Metal Horizon have released 
two independent studio albums which sold well in Botswana as well as other South African countries, uh, namely South Africa, Namibia, Lesotho, Zambia, Swaziland and Zimbabwe to mention a few. The first album Ancestral Blessing was released in 1999 and a second album Myopic Enslavement in 2001 and then in early 2003 Metal Horizon entered CSR Studios in Johannesburg, South Africa to record a self-titled album. Tell me, where can we find your albums online? In the near future will be, you know, actually we are in the process too. Yeah, mm. we hope it will be very soon. Very soon. Well, until then, you guys can check out Metal Horizon on facebook.com slash Metal Horizon. You can also find them on ReverbNation.com slash Metal Horizon. And there's a good few videos up on YouTube. Just a search for Metal Horizon and it's Metal Horizon without the H. Dumi, you took over um, vocal and guitar duties from former singer Jerona and uh, you guys re-recorded material for the Metal Horizon album. Was there uh, a lot of pressure on you to reproduce what he had done um, both live and in the studio? It wasn't that difficult, I should say, because these guys were there to assist me, you know, and also thanks to, you know, Stoops Damon of Rust because he, he helped me a lot with some ideas as to how to you know, learn new songs. Since I came in Metal Rising without knowing any one song, so he gave me like some tips as to how to start practicing a song when you're alone without anybody's help. That's very good of him. Rust, another good band out of Botswana that uh, we've played quite often here on the show and uh, maybe we should look at featuring them sometime. I want to say that the late Spencer uh, he, he, he was the was the main writer. He's he's the one who wrote most of the songs, like 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 ninety eight percent or ninety five percent of the songs were, were written by him. But in most cases, I must say that um, we we write as a group. We write. We, we, we he, he comes up with an idea, and then we sit down together and look at how the song looks, and then. We we we, yeah, we we just do that, but he would most of the time because he's the one who who, who plays and sings, he will just st start off right coming up with idea and then we we join him. May he soar in peace. He passed on in 2003. Um, yeah, that's that's that, that, that's how it that's how it happened. He we recorded everything together. We went into the studio in South Africa. We recorded all the material and did. The mixing and after that we did a bit of tour to Deben in South Africa and played a few other songs in South Africa I mean a, a few other shows in South Africa and then coming back uh, we, we did some some kind of promotion promotional uh, tours around and then he he just passed on and um, it was such a blow for us because we're only three in the band and he was the found, one of the founders and it took, uh, it took us um, so long to recover from his passing. It was such a bad thing for, it was a loss for, for Botswana, it was a loss for Metal Horizon, it was a loss for all the, all the Metal fans. Um, yeah, that's, that's how he did uh, The good thing is that uh, he passed. He passed on after having recorded every, after having done everything, you know. So we named the album Metal Horizon just to name it after him, because we felt uh, he deserves he deserves so much. We just wanted to honor him by naming that album Metal Horizon. So it's a self-titled album. What a great honor for him indeed. But we're going to check out a song now from your 1999 release called Ancestral Blessings. Uh, the song called. Uh, leave me alone. This is Delegaf Radio with Metal Horizon.
African Heavy Metal Show brought to you exclusively by the Liga Radio and the Dean Machine. I've never seen an African metal band actually take uh, dancers, traditional dancers on stage. And I, I think it's a fantastic idea. I mean, do you take the dancers with you wherever you go on tour? We sometimes do take them, but due to lack of funds, we don't take them always. We would love to have them, you know, everywhere we go. We don't usually take any dancers with us on the stage when we are doing our tours around. Um, what happened was that there was a competition in which uh, some good money had to be won. And we, we decided to, to give it a go. And since we know that um, even the judges themselves they are not accustomed to, to metal, so we are going to be judged against the mainstream people who are always seen playing everywhere as compared to as, as compared to a rock band you know these judges they don't they, the some of them they've never even seen a, a rock band um you know playing so we decided to give them exactly what when we 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 we, we, we created our own music uh, was was our, our main focus because since I said we are Afro metal band, we infuse the traditional traditional uh, taste with um, with the with the Western music. Uh, what what we did here, we took a song which was uh, traditionally oriented in terms of rhythm and even the singing. So, but it was still metal. It was still metal though. So we decided to call up the dancers to take some few, so some two dancers with us on the stage, and we rehearsed with them. We gave them the all, all, you know all the all the rhythms and uh, all the you know all the stages of the song where it where where it climatizes and where it goes down and all, you know each and every stage of the song. We rehearsed with them and showed them how we wanted it to. To be to to be presented to the to the judges, so then we we went into this competition and it, it, at regional level we came up number one, beating all the mainstream bands like all the artists which were there. There was close to more than twenty bands. We beat them all, and then we had to go to the final to the final stage where we came out number four, which is a, it was quite an achievement for us because. Uh, we have always, in actual fact, when we do these songs, when we perform these songs with our dancers, we actually try and mimic those, I mean, I mean the dancing part, we, we never really have to do it. We cannot completely do the dancing because we concentrate on our, on our instruments. So it's just, it was just more of trying to amplify what's coming out instrumentally with the actual dancing. And we knew that people will see the connection between the music and the dancers, and it was something that the, you know, they didn't, they needed they needed not to be told what it was. They could just see the connection between the dancing and the, despite the fact that it was rock music, it was something completely different that they have never seen before. So, we to answer the question again, you know, we, we usually don't take them around, but we could we we can occasionally take them when we need when we need to do something like that, or not not only on competitions, but certain songs we always we have always felt that we could bring maybe even a traditional instrument player to be part of our to be part of our, our, our group but we have never been able to to do that so that is how we did it yeah i really think you guys should strive to do that the video i saw on youtube posted up by mr edward banks yeah as we all know he's the guys writing the metal africa book coming out this year which we're really looking forward to i met with him earlier on uh or was it late last year? I met with him here in uh, London on his way to uh, Kenya. And uh, he interviewed me for a section of the book, which was uh, a great honor for me. Um, that song that we saw the dancers on on YouTube was called uh, I Have Found. Um, can you guys tell me a little bit about that song? The lyrics talks about someone who has found his love, or who has found his lover back. And he's asking for his girlfriend to promise him that she will never leave again and she will always be here and he is promising that I'll keep you here I'll make sure that you stay here I'll protect you 
of his talks about love he says i, I found you and uh, you know i found something that I've, i never thought i would i would ever have you know it's, it's, it's a love song all right cool let's check out that song this is a uh, daily gaff radio out of london uk streaming uh the metal horizon interview today and we're going to check that song out right now called i have found <laughs> Horizon, the pioneers of Afro metal, a song called Auntie's Gone that you've just heard. This is a Daily Gaff Radio coming at you from London, UK. I'm the Dean Machine, and we're interviewing Metal Horizon. So, guys, tell me um, when you toured South Africa for the first time, what was the response like? Mm, to play in South Africa for the st- first time actually was very good, and some fans they didn't know that we were from Botswana. Some thought that we we we, we were. We were South Africans, but at least these days they know very well that we are but one. We are from the other side of the pod. Have you guys ever toured um, in Europe or the United States? And uh, what, what sort of response do you get online from people in those countries? We've never toured Europe and we so much love to. Uh, but the response online is very good. Good. And we have more, you know, like when you check our Facebook page, yeah. more likes are from the Europeans and the mostly the Europeans but we would love to tour you know, the, the United States and you know, Europe and see how it is like to do things on a professional level yeah you know I'm not surprised that you get most of your likes from Europe it uh, seems to be a problem down there in South Africa where um, the bands don't like supporting each other I mean you just have to look at the posts we make on the metal uh, and hard rock show African page on Facebook 
not a lot of them support each other and to me it's a, always been a massive problem down there as soon as um, they wake the fuck up and realize that they're all in this for the same reason I think things will start improving for the metal scene in general for Africa worldwide that is anyway we have what it takes to to deliver when it comes to 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 play metal yes. so we have never really thought unfortunately it's, it, we're still dreaming about that we're still wishing that one day we could see ourselves touring uh, Europe cool. um, but I must say that we have had several invites cool. um, worldwide we have we have had invites from UK we have had invites from from Europe we have had invites from around the world it's only that we, we there's a certain I don't, I don't know what I should call them a red tape or mm -hmm. bureaucratic stuff that you know that will always hinder you to, to to achieve something so we had problems with agents people who could just take care of things for us on, on the other on the other side um, you know we, we just need someone who can arrange or maybe a place that we could because we there was a point that we even thought of just you know just leaving you know just leaving our country to go and see what happens and then as long as we have a return ticket money if things doesn't work for us we'll come back and yeah. we you know it, it just came to that because we really we were really dying to, to tour europe and things were not waiting for us in terms of um achieving that so we are still hopeful even today that uh, one day we'll see ourselves touring europe and uh, we, if they send word out there, we can just give at least maybe three to five gigs, and then we come back. That will be good. We don't mind much about um, and the food and stuff. We can take care of that, and as long as we can get a date with a band, two, maybe two, three. I mean, five, f three to five days of playing. That will be enough for us. That we just that's just what we want to do. We can, we can pay for tickets for our own selves. And yeah, and that's it. We're still looking forward to it. Well, I can tell you, we'd love to have you over here in Europe, and I'm sure there's a lot of places in America and Canada and elsewhere that would um, love to have some Afro metal bands over there. It's funny. I was online the other day chatting in um, on another radio station's chat room, and uh, there was a guy in there from Brazil. And um, when I mentioned the whole Afro metal thing, he was like totally shocked to hear that there was even. Um, Metal, such a thing as Afro metal. He said he's never heard of an African metal band in his life. So, uh, needless to say, I told him to check out the show, and um, hopefully, with the help of Deligaf Radio and this show, we can uh, get African metal exposed to those people in Brazil and in the other places of the world where they have not yet heard all this killer metal coming out of Africa. Uh, the the response has always been good. I remember when. When we posted our demo online on soundclick.com sometimes in 2002 or early 2003, mm -hmm. it remained there for about three weeks it, at, at number one on soundclick.com. Uh, um, I was amazed to see that uh, at least <laughs> something that I never expected that uh, we were on top of, I still have, we still have the copies of that. We. We were on top of Metallica, and oh, cool. that was amazing to see that, uh, that 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 song was that good. You know, you know, it stayed there for for, for more than three weeks at number one on soundclick.com. So amazing. So that, and then the, all the comments that came with that, you know, they were so good. We we had a lot of people all over the world commenting about our music, and some wanting to know. Uh, Hey, how we how we do it? How it's like to be in a in a rock band, you know, being being Botswana or something like that. And yeah, we, we we the response was so good. We have people wanting to know exactly who Metal Horizon who Metal Horizon is, and uh, you know they just want to to have copies. Some people wanted to have copies, and you know that that kind of thing. So the response has always been good. We 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 loved it. That's cool, man. Um, speaking of competitions and being at number one and things like that, there's a song of yours called SADC. Um, Santos, can you tell me a little bit about the song, please? Actually, the song was written when there was a competition for Sadek's song. By then, we took position three for the song. 
Final position one was taken by Duncan Sinyas, who was playing uh, African traditional music. And Sadek is a song about uh, his, ori his original block for Southern Africa. Sadek SADC stands for Southern African Development Committee. This is a is is an organization where all the Southern African countries from Botswana, Angola, South Africa, Malawi, Mauritius, and stuff, mm -hmm. they converge and talk about uh, how they can develop countries in the Southern Africa.